What's up guys, we're back for another one. I didn't want to have to buy these, but uh, here we are. So I got a couple of buddies running these. You can tell by the title. These are the Eurosport camber park things. They are non-adjustable and they give negative 0.8 degrees of camber per side. And they um, retain using the OEM, uh, I lost words, bearing tops, strut top bearings. Um, yeah, so basically the only thing you gotta do is drill a hole through the cups, which I will show you here. I'm not doing this till tomorrow morning, but uh, I'll show you right now. Okay, these are nice. So I really didn't want anything adjustable that was gonna move, especially up there, because you don't have easy access to it. You have to drop the strut to uh, move things. I wanted something static and something that uh, was actually gonna give what it says. So some companies say, they say, say it gives you one degree of camber, but they're talking about half a degree on each side. This company says 0.8 and they mean 0.8. It's 0.8 per side. So this is what they look like. Um, so this Allen right here, which I can't seem to get out with my fingers, um, that's what holds this together. So you gotta drill through um, one of the pieces, which I'll show you guys, and that's what holds this in. You can see this is not center. Um, this is where your, your strut bolt goes through. So it's gonna offset it where it would be in the middle normally to right there, and that gives you your, your 0.8. So with my Verkline stuff, oh, that's cool, they give you a socket and then a, an extra Screw I guess. Oh, and it gives you Loctite. So I don't want to go out and buy Loctite. Um, it gives you this to drill through, and I, I'm assuming this is for, that's pretty cool that they give you literally everything you need. Well, besides the tools to get the shred out and stuff, but that's really nice of them, honestly. I didn't think it came with this clock. Yeah, oh, it's seven eighths. It's like machined real nice too. And then you got this drill bit. That's cool. And then Loctite. Um, if there's actual these are instructions or not I'm, I'm pretty sure there's instructions on their website I know sorry I lied there is instructions right here boom so tomorrow morning we'll go ahead take everything off we'll go through the instructions everything seems pretty straightforward here so anyway so my Verk line stuff you can get up to four and a half degrees of camber with that which I was really hoping I could get to 3.2 degrees negative camber just from the bottom. Well, I couldn't because I ran out of threads on the um, tie rod. My tie rod wouldn't screw out enough to give me back to normal toe. So I had to get these to move it from the top instead of doing it from the bottom of the strut. So hopefully woo, these will get me exactly to where I want to be and uh, not make a whole bunch of noise. I said, I have a couple buddies running these. They said that they're great. So that's why we snagged them. So I'll uh, see you guys in the morning. What is up everybody? So here on this one, we already got, uh, we got it installed. She's all together. I can tell already I got uh, some nice more camber here. Makes me happy. Um, and the only reason I'm doing this is because Verkline, you're able to get like four and a half degrees. So you got adjustment on this ball joint and you got hella adjustment. Um, you guys can't see it. On this guy right here, you can see it's not even all the way out. But the more I brought this out, the more I had to adjust toe and I ran out of threads on the other side at least. So um, I'm hoping by adding camera from the top, it won't affect this as much, but uh, I don't know. We're gonna find out. <laughs> so here we are. Like I said, I already did that one side and we're off to the other. Now it's a little different for me since I already have springs in the car. I don't need a spring compressor. If you're on stock springs or, you know, any type of OEM springs that actually have like some, like there's not much tension on here. Like I can move this. You wouldn't be able to do that on stock springs this whole thing would fly off so it's a 21 mil and with an impact you can just boop, shoot it off 
And if it does come a little loose and then the whole thing's just spinning, you can go lift this up, grab yourself some pliers and something, you know, that, that won't, that will prevent this from marring the strut up. So I'll put this in between the teeth and hold the strut and then zoom it off. It's that easy. I'm gonna try and set the camera up here and show you guys. All right, so we got our tool on the strut. We're just gonna, whoop, whoop, slipped off. Let's see if I can, it's kind of hard to do here. Get this whole thing over. Oh goodness. This one's to keep rotating. Okay, so that, put it up against here. is off. Now from here, take this whole thing out, pick out your bump stop right here and flip it upside down. That's what the instructions call for. And try and leave this at an angle that it's not going to hit the ground all hard. Okay. Now next up, put that down. This guy right here has got to come out. I thought, I said in earlier, I thought we had to like drill a hole for Ah, grab my stuff. Thought we had to drill a hole for this, but that's not the case. This two part system here takes place of this whole metal piece. So with this bit, you can just drill that baby out. And what I did, I don't have a vise or anything here. So I put it up against my feet like this to hold it still and just sent it. Well, if you guys want to watch, I'll give you a quick clip of how I held it. I forgot there's a magnet attached to my GoPro. Okay. Something like that. Boom. And be careful when you're touching things because this stuff is hot. Alright, so you see this part here and this part here. These can kind of get pushed in. So there's notches on these, see here and here, and that's where these are going to go. But you see this arrow, this is points towards the back or towards the frame of the car and this points towards your wheel. So you want the added camera, you want it like this. Big hole towards the line. And it's hard to like press in there so I put a little bit of oil in here to help press it. And the top piece wants to stay in, it'll stay snug. The bottom piece likes to pop out. So you kind of have to pinch them together and then take this, you gotta put Loctite on and then get it through and start threading it to pull them together. I use a little bit less lube on this one so it wouldn't slip out. I believe this goes to I think it says 14 foot pounds on this. The instructions do say do this a little bit different. It includes a black screw that you put in lightly and then you set this on the strut top, screw on your big nut right here, your replacement strut nut to get it lined up. Then you pull the black one out that would be in here, then put the silver one in and then you torque everything down together. But I didn't read the instructions and it worked out fine for me. So. I'm doing it this way. Get in there. Decently snug. Click! You guys heard it? I heard it. Now, in this hole here, where the strut nut goes, which you guys, you guys definitely can't see, a little bit of rubber like pokes in and wants to prevent this from going all the way down. It's supposed to be flush. You could probably really press it with your hands, but I have a mallet here, so one little boop. Boom. Then you sit down on your strut, tighten this bad boy up. But, so for me, I had to add one extra set. Because I'm using um, shorter springs, this piece, your strut bearing, there was there's space between the bearing and this top so i was afraid that when the suspension 
is going to go back in with this having um, however much gap, you know, that it would maybe twist and not be exactly where it needs to be because there's a notch here and a notch here and these need to stay together. So I got a little bit of super glue and super glued around this perimeter and then put them together so that this wouldn't fall down when I'm installing it and then it could possibly go on sideways. And you can see is this, this top, the top is not flat, it's angled for camber. So it's gotta go on that one specific way. So a little bit of super glue around this perimeter if you have that, uh, that problem. I just went to, well I didn't, I sent the old lady out, got some of this stuff right here. It seemed to dry in like 30 seconds, so go ahead and just throw some glue down around the perimeter. Maybe a couple zigzags. Around the inside and the outside perimeter here. Looks good to me. Go across a couple spots. Okay. Make sure I don't super glue this to my hand. And it's like I said, you got your notch and your notch. I'm just gonna set those together, apply some pressure, and then wait about five minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll install it onto the car. This part's simple. Make sure you put some Loctite on your threads. Slide this baby down on. And line it up with your new bolt. Hand tight as much as possible. And we're gonna hit it here with an Ooga Dooga. And then after that, you're done. You just reinstall your stuff and your alignment's gonna be off. So make sure you get an alignment because you're gonna destroy your tires. But, um, ready, here we go. me like I said make sure you get an alignment and uh, enjoy your extra camber